Hi, my name is Rebecca Powers with SLCT, and here is what's happening in Sterling and Lancaster. The town clerks would like to remind you that dog licenses are due, and if you don't register before March 31st, late fees will be assessed. The Friends of the Sterling Seniors Monthly Pancake Breakfast will be on March 29th from 7.30 to 9 a.m. For more information, call the Senior Center at 978-422-3032. The Boys and Girls Club of Central Massachusetts will be holding a science festival on April 13th from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. in Leominster. For more information, visit www.centralmasciencefestival.org. The Sterling Recreation Department's annual Easter egg hunt will take place on April 13th at Memorial Park. The hunt will begin at noon with a special visit from the Easter Bunny. For more information, call Kristen at 978 422-3041. I'm Lex Thomas, editor of Sterling Meeting House News, roaming reporter and editor for Sterling Lancaster Community Television. Now, I realize that we are just in the spring, but you know something? The summer and the fall are going to come up really fast. And as soon as we hit the beginning of September, we are thinking about the Sterling Fair. But guess what? The people on the Sterling Fair Committee started to think about the Sterling Fair right after the last Sterling Fair was finished. Can you imagine that? So they've already been working on this for months. I am very, very pleased to welcome the chairperson of the Sterling Fair Committee, Doug Downey. Doug, welcome so much. Well, thank you, Lex. And thank you. so happy to have you speaking with me. Now, first of all, I need to acknowledge that the committee and the fair has endured a real loss. Uh, yes. Over this year, please uh, talk to us about Ray Rugg Sr. Yeah, so we had a, a very uh, big loss in our committee family, uh, Ray Rugg Sr. So Ray, I can't even begin to tell the people how many things Ray did for the fair. Um, we know he was in charge of setup, but there was just, he was down there weeks before the fair, weeks after, um, little things that he would do. And we're just going to miss him so much. Um, I always tell he, he's the type of person that even during the fair, if something happened, you know, uh, one time I tell this story, somebody drove a stake into one of our water lines, big gush of water. All the rest of the committees running around saying, what are we going to do about this? You know, this is a big problem. Ray just goes over quietly, digs it up, fixes it, and it's all done. And, you know, he just uh, amazing and just a great person, too. I mean, just it's very, very sad to, to lose Ray. Um, and just to have that ability to just, you know, do whatever needs to be done mm -hmm. is that's that's rare in any case. Absolutely. Now, I know, though, that even when Ray was was with us, um, you folks were always in need of volunteer help for the yes. committee. And I can't imagine now with his loss um, that must only have increased. Absolutely. So absolutely. let's talk a little bit about that. Well, first of all, let's talk about this last year's fair. Um, you were just telling me off camera that this was a record number of attendees. Yes, yes. We actually had, we're estimating 42 to 45,000 people came into town for the fair. So it was our biggest, biggest fair ever. And um, you know, this to me is amazing because when you think about the population of Sterling being approximately 8,000 people, yes, we're yeah. talking five, six times the population of town Absolutely. attended this fair, which is yeah. just amazing. Now, what is it that you think brings people to the fair? Um, several things. I think the, the biggest factor is, and we pride ourselves on this, we are a free fair. So it's free admission, free parking. It doesn't cost you anything to get into our fair. Um, we do sell buttons. Um, I have one here. Yes. <laughs> um, and they're $3 a piece. That is something that we ask people to buy. You definitely don't have to, but that's one of the big money uh, revenue sources for us for the fair. Um, but that, and it's a, it's a good old-fashioned country agricultural fair, and that's the base of our fair. So free admission free to get in there's lots of things that you can do now if you want to ride the rides and the carnivals you know um there that that is you have to pay for that or some of the great food we have and that's another Wonderful thing that people food. come for yes. yeah we have we're kind of selective about our vendors who come in um and they have proven track record and they, they do really well but now the fact too that it's a free fair this is uh a very much uh unusual in this yes. country is it not yeah we as far as we know we are the lot we know we're the largest fair in new england right that is still free so with the largest event of its type 
we believe in the entire country. We're not quite sure, but um, you know, there's there's nothing else that we know of that attracts this many people that you don't have to pay to park and you don't have to pay to get in. Uh, so, and and it's one of the things we pride ourselves on, and and you know with a lot of revenue sources that we depend on. So um, the carnival rides is part of it. Uh, the, you know, the, the food vendors, the different vendors we have, whether it's food or whether it might be, uh, you know, a service that they provide or whatever, uh, that's part of our revenue. Uh, the buttons is a big part of our revenue, t-shirts, but we, uh, we're self-funded. So, you know, we count on that to have the fair the next year, but every year our, our costs go up. So, um, you know, there's, there's always rise in costs that we that come up, but uh, we, we pride ourselves on keeping it free and we want to keep it free as long as we possibly can. And I know that it's an event that that people around town uh, just really enjoy as yes. well. I remember too when my son was growing up that that was just always that first weekend in September. You yeah, always yeah. looked forward to the fair. Now, so tell me about your volunteer needs at this point. What is it that you're looking for and what makes a great volunteer for the fair? So a great volunteer is just volunteering some time. So you know, we'd prefer, we, we start, as you said, um, you know, the, the fair ended the week after we were plotting, uh, for 2018, we were kind of plotting and starting to get ready for 2019. So we're looking for several types of vendors. Right now, what we need the most, I mean, excuse me, several types of, of volunteers. volunteers. Um, what we're looking for now is people for the fair committee. So, and this year we've taken on a task. We have a volunteer uh, committee, subcommittee that has been recruiting and, and trying to do what do we need to do to recruit people and we've come up with specific uh, subjects that that people can volunteer for we'll use anything I mean if it's only for a few hours during the fair to help us set up pick up trash whatever it might be but the committee is the big part um, especially with with the passing of Ray uh, so some of the, the the four spots that we've identified we need immediate help with is the field setup and breakdown which Ray was such a big part of. So that could be mowing the lawns. It could be helping us hook up the water lines. Um, it could be, you know, uh, kind of prepping for where all the spaces go, the, mm -hmm. the vendors, the, you know, the livestock and that. Um, marketing and publicity is another thing. We don't have anybody kind of working on that right now. So um, we don't pay for advertising. That's part mm -hmm. of our kind of background. Um, so we depend on a lot of like, like Meeting House News and mm -hmm. like this here, the, you know, Sterling Lancaster Cable Television to help us to get the, the fair out. Sure. Um, and uh, and then also like, you know, donations from uh, marketing from other uh, businesses around town, uh, advertising in our, our book that we put out in our website, um, and then trying to get more community involvement. So, yes. you know, uh, marketing is also getting like the groups in town, like softball, little league, uh, flag football, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, you know, all those to get into our fair. We really want, that's that's what our fair is about. It's a community fair. Um, exhibit Hall is another one. So last year we had uh, a little bit of an issue with the hangar we couldn't use only that. because they, were, they had a boom in business and they had a lot of airplanes in there. Mm -hmm. To remove airplanes that are in repair takes a lot of documentation. Sure. So um, they asked us kindly if there was any way we could not use the hangar. We are so grateful to the airport for letting us use the land, but absolutely we did. So uh, this year we have a plan um, without using the hangar to bring back the arts and crafts, which was part of what Excellent. we Excellent. I know that's going to be really, really it welcome is, yeah. because I know that people miss that. They Everybody did. understood, you know, that, that you couldn't use the hangar, but yeah. it was missed. Yeah. It, it was. And, yes. And with that, we need volunteer. We need specific one or two people that are willing to run that department. So in other words, sure. getting the, the forms out there, yes. right? Uh, logging when stuff comes in, being there for the fair. And, and they can coordinate volunteers. They don't have right. to be there the whole time. But, um, you know, just helping with that whole kind of setup and, you know, making sure that everything gets judged and all the ribbons and sure. you know, that type of stuff. So. And I think that having that specificity when you're looking for volunteers yes. is important too, because I think one of the things that sometimes um, concerns people is, you know, say for instance, I'm an accountant. Yes. And uh, I come and say, I'd like to work on the fair. And of course, every committee needs accounting help, but maybe I just don't want to exactly. take that into my my 
private life and my hobby life. Yes. Uh, but so how do you deal with something like that? So that is something we've taken a new approach to this year. So I'm glad you asked that uh, because it was we, we did that in the past. So someone would come in, like you said, uh, it was a, an accountant or uh, as the manager of the airport just said to me, the last thing a postman wants to do when he comes home from work is go for a walk. Right. So, <laughs> so, Good point. Yeah, it was a great quote. Uh, so we have identified not only these four areas, but other you know specific roles that need to be done so that if somebody comes in, we're going to ask them, what are you interested in? It? You know, just because you're sure. an accountant, like I said, the last thing you want to do is probably, you know, help us with the, the funds the or books, the, you know, right. the books. Yeah. You know, you might want to help out with the livestock. You know, you sure. might want to help out with setting things up. So yeah. um, if somebody comes in, we'll have specific areas. The other thing we're trying to do is uh, we're going to plan a dinner uh, in town um, and we're going to invite people from the community to the dinner and we'll have kind of booths set up. We haven't 100% solidified it yet, but we'll have different parts where we need help mm -hmm. and people can come over if they're interested and we can tell them, hey, this is what we need help with. Sure. Yeah. Now, insofar as getting involved with the committee, so how does anybody who has watched this and who would like to get involved, what do they do now? So I would say the best thing is um, on our website, sterlingfair.org. Um, go on to that and there is a section on volunteers and how to uh, you know how to, to sign up for a volunteer um, there is uh, I, I mean I can give up my information if that's no, I think that you've given okay, us right. plenty with that. Now, um, is this yeah. just for Sterling people or no, you're looking... No, I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah. Yes, it, just because we're the Sterling Fair doesn't mean that we need, you know, we have people on the committee that are from all different towns, from the right. area. We're a community event. We're not just Sterling, so I'm glad you brought that up. Excellent. Uh, well, you know, we're looking for any anybody that can help and is interested in helping this great. And we want to expand more into the community, too. Sure, so, yes. Know. Same thing with, the like, the, the, the groups, the, the, like, softball, Little League, Boy Scouts, it doesn't have to be sterling, right? It can be community. Um, sure. What are the dates for the fair this year? So it's a 6th, 7th, and 8th. So Friday Very the good. 6th, 7th, yes. and 8th. Fireworks are going to be Friday night. Um, if there's rain or, or weather, yes. they'll, they'll be Saturday night. Yes. Um, and I know last year the weather was just uh, perfect. It 70s was, during the day, yeah. 60s at night. We couldn't, couldn't ask, ask for better weather. Exactly. And, and we think that's why we had the record yes. crowds, a big part of why we had right. it. Right. So. And yeah. I'm sure that you're going to have them again because people love them. Remember, yes. go on to the Sterling Fair website. You'll see the address crawling across the bottom of the screen here. Awesome. And, uh, you know, volunteer. This is an organization that yep. really needs your help. And it's an organization that needs people's help in order to survive as well because there's an awful lot to be done and as they say yeah. you know many hands make light work exactly. I'm not sure how light the work <laughs> is but yeah. uh, you yeah. know well Doug we are really so pleased that you have uh, taken the time to be here in Sterling mm -hmm. Meeting House News we will be running an article in our August issue as well I'm sorry in our April issue about the fair and also we'll be running a, a tribute to to Ray Rugg Sr. who I know awesome. is a real loss to the to yeah. the entire community. So my yeah. condolences to the fair Thank you. committee. We, we will be dedicating this year's that. fair to Ray too. So. Lovely. Yeah, well, yeah. that's marvelous. Yeah. And make sure you get out there and volunteer. Thank you awesome. so much. Thank Doug. you so much. Thank you, everyone. The Sterling Rec Road Race will be held on April 14th at 9 a.m. at the Griffin Road Athletic Complex. Registration opens at 8 a.m. For more information, visit sterlingrecruns.racewire.com. Our Father's House annual benefit will take place on April 13th at 8 p.m. at Fitchburg State University. For tickets or more information, call 978-345-2256, extension 300. The Sterling Master Plan open house will take place on April 4th from 4 to 8 p.m. at the Sterling Senior Center. Residents can share their thoughts, ideas, and visions for Sterling's future. The Seven Bridge Writers Collaborative is hosting their fifth annual student poetry contest. Grades one through 12 from the Neshoba Regional School District can submit their poetry to Seven Bridge Writers Collaborative at gmail.com. Poems must be received by March 29th. For more information, visit www.sevenbridge.org. I'm Rebecca Powers, and that's what's happening.